So how fast is the silicon gonna be in the new MacBooks that ship maybe later this year or the beginning of next year? Can we even take a guess? I think we can. All right, so in this video, and I do have some notes because there's a lot of stuff to cover here, I wanted to go through and show people, can we predict how fast the new MacBook Silicon is gonna be for the new MacBooks? And I think we can do that. There's a couple things we wanna go through first. We have to look at the history of how fast these iterations happened before, and, uh, and then we can kind of extrapolate how fast or how fast this new chip might be based off of the past. So let's dive into it. We're gonna get into a little bit, you know, a little technical stuff here. I'm gonna show some charts. Stay, stay tuned for the charts. It's gonna make a little bit more sense once I get into there. But let's go ahead and just talk about the, the chips. So the A7 chip is basically the iPhone chip, and that was in around 2013. And then they had the A7, the A8, the A9, 10, 11, 12, A13. A13 was 2019. And during that time, those are the A chips, and those A processors developed by Apple were basically going to be, um, they, were, you know, they would jump all around, but I mean, we can take an average of all those jumps. But some of them were 30% GPU increases, 30% CPU increases, and there was a bunch of other stuff that they added to the chips as far as technology. But let's just the assume a speed right now. So we can kind of see those iteration and jumps and then kind of get an average of what they were. And now we're coming up on the A14 for the new iPhone. And the A14X is supposed to ship here at the fourth quarter of 2020. And in that quarter, they think that they're going to be, Apple's going to have production of around 5,500 wafers per month. Could be expanded depending on how fast this actually happens. But that's going to be the new 18, the A14X chip. Now the X iterations of the A chips, so let's just say it's A14A, a 14 14X. The X iterations are usually used for like the iPad Pros, so they're a much faster chip usually. And again, we can chart those out on a chart and look at the differences there. So if there's, you know, from the A13 to the A13X, there's a, there's a difference. And then from the A14, how much of a difference is that going to be? So what we think is we think that A14X is going to be basically the minimum of what, you know, this is going to ship with this new uh, MacBook or something that's gonna have the new silicon. Now granted, the A14X chip is going to be probably renamed something they might call it like the AM14 something. Well, you, I have no idea. It's gonna be basically probably more premium silicon just for MacBooks. So it's gonna maybe be a very you know few selected uh, wafers that they're gonna use for this that are gonna be maybe optimal, we don't know. Long story short, it could even be faster. So at the end of the day, we're gonna use some compromises here. And we're just gonna kind of see with the charts here how fast all these can actually, or maybe can be. And then it'll give you guys an idea of how fast this might end up being with the new chips. All right, here's the first chart I wanna show everyone. Now stay with me, this is all gonna make sense in a couple minutes here. So this is just basically the A7 chip over here, A8, A9, A10, all the way to the A13. So if you look at this chart, these are on this side over here, this is Geekbench 5 scores. So like A7 was, I don't even know what this is, maybe like 450, 500. These are just estimates. This is about 600. This goes up to about, you know, a little over 1,000. You can see how it slowly progresses. Some years there's a lot bigger jumps than others. But this is the A-series chip in the actual iPhone. And you can kind of see, you know, obviously there's some less iterations down here in the lower, you know, from A9 to A10. And there's some bigger jumps from the A10 to the A11 and so on. But we can come up with an average here. And we can see basically what this means. And that's the first thing I want to show people. This is just kind of a chart to show you what this means. I'm going to start adding things to this, which is going to make more sense here in a second. All right, so let's take a look at this now. And the goal is to get the A14 speed over here for the A14 chip and also for the A14X, which might be the holy grail, the new MacBook you know, silicon. So let's start over here. So obviously the green now I added here, these are the, gonna be the X speeds. So for instance, in the A8 chips right here, you can see the A8X is right there. You can see the jump. Now the A9 is here, the A9X is in green. Some years they didn't have the X, so on like the A10, A10X. But what you have to get out of this graph, if you look at this graph, is usually what happens is, and here's the A8, look over here, A8. The A8X is here, usually the next iteration, like the next jump from the A9 matches the A8X. So you can see how these are very similar here. So then this one went up and now look how these are very similar. It's a little bit little bit more. So, so what this tells us basically is when they do have an X series, like here's the A10X, you know, you can see right here, the next jump over, like right over here for the A series is about the same as this series, which is the X series. So we can extrapolate this out. So if you look over here, at, as we get closer to the A14, this is the last X series chip here, and it's up here. I mean, it's up to 40 something hundred, 45, 4600. So the first thing that we wanna do is we're gonna add, you know, we think we're gonna project that the, a, the new A14 chip over here is gonna match this one, you know, right over here. 
So let's go ahead and put this in the chart and that'll be the A14, that's gonna be our guess on this one. All right, so and here's our prediction finally. Let me explain how. So here's the A14 predictions, if you can see it right here. And what this basically means is, so the way we got to this is here's the last X chip that we saw and so we're gonna extrapolate over to this one over here. So the A14 is gonna be just slightly higher than this one, and that puts that at a pretty big number of around 4,700. Now this is a multi-core Geekbench 5 scores, multi-core Geekbench 5 scores. So like, let's just say around that 4,700, somewhere in that range. So now, whenever there's an A series chip like this, to, and it jumps to the X series, there's always like a 40 to 50% increase between this and this. So when I times this by about 45%, that's how we get to the A14X, which is right over here, which is this green one. And that's actually, so our prediction for the A14X, based off this graph and based off just extrapolating the data, is around, let me see here, 6815, 6815, which is a huge number. Let me show you what that kind of corresponds to. And keep in mind, this is gonna just be for probably the first iteration on a low-end MacBook. All right, so at a bare minimum, that, that A14X might be the bare minimum speed of the chip that's gonna go into this new MacBook. Whatever, even if it's just a straight low-end MacBook, that's probably the minimum. When we look at Geekbench multi-score here, and we look at, you know, almost, it's right around that 8, or I'm sorry, right around 7,000, somewhere in that range, 6815. If you go down here, you can look at the, the MacBook Pro 16-inch late 2019, and this is the i9-9880HK, so it's a pretty big power horse with eight cores, is around the same at 6944. So if you can imagine that on the low-end MacBook with Apple Silicon with the A14X, they might, they might rename it, it could actually actually be around this area, which is just as fast as 2019 16-inch, but an i9-9800 from Intel. So you can imagine that's uh, that's kind of the low-end estimate that I'm estimating. It could be even a little bit higher, which puts it up in here into the uh, iMac Pros. And this is just the beginning. So we can see that these chips are going to be faster, cheaper, and uh, hopefully they, you know, within the year they're going to start working correctly. But it's a big jump, I think, and it's going to be something that's going to be eye-opening. All right, you can see that this is going to be a fairly fast machine, you know, compared to what's out there right now, or at least be, you know, level with it. And, and again, Apple doesn't have to get it is, you know, maybe faster than what's out there with Intel's fastest right now, because what I'm thinking is this chip is going to be shipped on something like the straight MacBook, maybe the 12-inch MacBook that comes back, or maybe the base model of the MacBook 13. We'll, um, we'll have to see what it actually does, but I don't think they're going to be going after the super high market yet until they kind of test the waters on this. So the chip doesn't have to be up in that range. I mean, it's going to have to be faster than those lower range MacBooks, or those later, you know, the 12 inch before was M chips. People didn't like them because they were low power, but they were also very low performance. So that's one thing to consider. So as we see, I mean, this is a good, good way to kind of figure out like how fast can this chip be? What, what should we expect the speed to be on this chip? Let me know what you guys think on this, because this is something that, you know, just putting it together and looking at all the different chips is one thing. Is it accurate, you think? You know, does it give you at least a little bit of an idea of how fast this chip might be? At the end of the day, again, that's my famous saying, you know, you just never know, and you just have to kind of take guesses at stuff. For all we know, this could be coming out, you know, in a couple days, and then, you know, there's a new, th there's a uh, conference coming up in a few days. They might say it then, and then all this stuff might be, you know, bunk, and it might be gone. So, at the end of the day, like I said, just do your own due diligence. This is only a video, kind of entertain people. Let me know what you think in the comments, though. Hopefully you can, uh, you know, click the like button, support my channel, and I will talk to you soon. I make a couple videos a day, a day, a week. I wish it was a day. Talk to you soon. Peace.